is so big. <laughs> well, you're all ready for Christmas, I guess. We are pretty much there. <laughs> We've been working on it, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> well, oh, and that know. little Amanda, she had to go and get surgery. I know. Right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, today? Oh, no. Oh. The fifth is when she had her surgery. Oh, okay. I was like, I, don't, I already know she had one, but is she having another one? What happened? <laughs> well, I talked to her on the phone. She said she was doing pretty good. Mm -hmm. Your mom said she had been to school. She needed to go to school to talk to her teacher or something. Oh. And she said, boy, she came home and took two pain pills and went to bed. Oh, man. <laughs> so... But I haven't it's even... good she's had that and got it over. Yeah, yeah. I think my mom my mom had hers out too. Yeah. Is it gallbladder? Is that what it was yeah. we were talking about? Yeah. Go yeah. Back. <laughs> but I was go surprised back. that Amanda needed it, you know. Yeah. At her young age. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Hey, Sounds Michael. like your mom's busy doing sewing. Yes, she's been doing a ton of it, and I think she's getting, she's starting to do some baby stuff. She wants to make her own store online instead of sharing it with somebody else, and then start making some little blessing outfits and hair bows and things. She sure is. Just go get one more, one more toy. Do you think you could go out to the car and get the And there's treats, there's cookies, and, excuse me. Candy there, in the cookie jar and in the other that. jar. Yeah, well, I don't know if that's such a good idea though. <laughs> right before dinner. No, nope, you want to take his little coat <gasps> off so he can, dog. when he goes out, he'll. Here. Yeah. Do you like the? Oh, the baby likes the doll. <laughs> yes. <laughs> do you think you could get the Medicaid folder out from the car? Yeah, I guess so. Okay. It has a, I wrote down, I already told you this a while ago. Do you remember? Um, last time we came, oh, James, can you go find another toy? A second toy for Corbin? There's more toys down there, I think, right? <laughs> They're behind the Christmas tree. Oh, I'll go get it. I'll I don't know whether you can get in there to get it. Oh, yeah, I can. Why is she peaceful now? Uh, that is good. It's always nice when she's taking it's a It's cold nap. enough, isn't it, now? Yeah. Oh, I hate cold. this cold weather. <laughs> Me too. Is it okay if they Yes, that is fine. Yes, and there are some cookies for them. <laughs> yeah, they yes. help themselves. <laughs> well, good. Well, we don't dinner, so they'll probably turn into the trouble <laughs> I hope yeah. not. We'll have to, you know, monitor it a little bit. Well, that's just fine. They're here for the kids. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Yeah, what are you going to build for me? You're going to build a house? A helicopter. <laughs> a helicopter? <laughs> You're going to build a helicopter? Well, I was getting to thinking of some questions I wanted to ask you from when you were a kid and if you can remember. <laughs> yeah, that's the question. <laughs> I'm getting there, you know, I'm getting up there for in years where I, I might not be able to remember them. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, let's, let me move this. Hey, Corbin, do you want this? Do you want this baby? Yeah. No, that's what she said. Well, I just have a couple, well, I guess I wrote down a whole bunch of them. Oh, okay. But you don't have to answer all of them, or if you want to. You can. Oh, okay. <laughs> or if you don't want to, just say, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> All right. So, have you been surprised with the way life has turned out for you? No, I've been happy. I've, I've been happy. I've had a good life. 
Yeah. And I've had many, many blessings. Yeah. This sixth spell has been a blessing because I've been able to go back clear to my baptism and just evaluate the blessings I've had from there right up till now. Yeah. So I'm blessed and I'm happy. Oh, man. That's cool. Um, do you remember what you expected your life to be like when you were a young mom looking into the future? Or a teenager looking into the future? Oh, I was just excited to be a mom. And I wanted to stay home and take care of my little ones. Mm -hmm. And when Renee was the baby, was uh, when I had to go to work because Max got hurt. So, mm, yeah. so uh, I had to get my mother tended her and my neighbor tended her part of the time, and then I would cry all the way to work because I was working at BYU. And oh. So I didn't think I would ever have to leave home. I would just stay home and tend my kids. But, yeah. like but I had to help yeah, make the living. Yeah. Does my mom know that you cried? Yeah, work? I'm sure I've mentioned it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, That's I would cry all the way to work. and. All the way home, wondering if their, the kids were okay. Oh, that's sad. I felt that way a few times too. Yeah. Oh, it's hard to leave them, especially when they're little. Especially yeah. when they're really little. Yeah. Um. Is there any any one thing, or more, whatever you want to say, that you would like to say to your kids, to your grandkids? And children, like, you know, before you're not here. Is there well, anything? I just hope they'll always get along and then they'll love each other. And we've been for, pretty fortunate that way with the family. They, they have always got along real good, it seems like. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. Do you think you can hold her? Do you want me to hold her? Oh. I'm taking a little burst, you know. Oh. Here, She's getting oh. 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 She's so little. And I, with the other two, I was like, oh, come on, you got to grow up and crawl and walk. I'm so excited. And this one, I'm like, you can stay little. It's okay. I know they grow up so fast. They do. It's yeah. crazy. They do. Could um, you make a car? Could you make a car? No. Not right now, but you can put stuff together and try. <laughs> so, <sighs> I've just, I've been worried. I don't want you to leave. <laughs> but I but understand. You know the time's coming. Yeah. I can't live forever. <laughs> and that's why I'm like, well, if I have to, and I don't want it to be offensive to you, you know, I don't want you to be offended that... No, I want to ask these questions fine. before I can't, you know. I'm, I'm, I feel fine about it. Yeah. Okay. I'm glad. I'm really glad about that. I'm yeah. glad you're not like, oh, I'm thinking of me like that <laughs> no, <laughs> or something. I know. I can't live a lot longer. I'm just 93 now. But you're super grandma. Uh, <laughs> You've just left. <laughs> I've been oh. I've been pretty healthy. Yes. Yeah. My doctor told me, Doctor Taylor told me the other day. He said, "You're the youngest 93 old woman I've ever seen." <laughs> and he said, "I would say you're 72." So I thought, well, that's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> That is. Yeah. It's, and that's another one of those blessings. I, I know. Think. I have been blessed when I. Think of my baptism. My baptism was so neat. I was baptized in this pond in Emory. Oh. And with a dirt bottom. And there was about eight or nine kids that were being baptized with me that were all eight years old. And the, I, I just remember the day so well. And then the, they, the priest had set chairs up on the bank of that pond. So that we could be confirmed. 
and I'll never forget the day I was, uh, the, when they confirmed me. It's just as bright today as it was that day. I closed my eyes so tight, but I felt a light all around me. And I, I thought, that's the Holy Ghost. I knew right then that's what it was. But then I th I've been thinking, too, about all the blessings I've had ever since I was baptized. And when I got married to Max, I got my eternal companion. We were married in the Manti Temple and just raised our six kids over here in the house. And just, we had a good home. And Max and I were together 30 years. And then he was taken on 1975. And I thought, boy, that's going to be hard. But the blessings just started coming, and I was able to work. I was able to work at the at BYU, I, and that was a good job for 18 years. Yeah. And then. What's? She's gotta go to the bathroom. Can you find it? It needs a light. It needs a light. Sorry about that. <laughs> Anyway, uh, anyway, then I was called to work at the temple after work at BYU. I would go out and work a shift at the temple. And that has been a real blessing in my life because I've worked at four different temples besides Provo. Wow. But uh, then to go on my missions, and I look back and I think, how did I dare do that? Because <laughs> it takes quite a bit of nerve to go on a mission and leave your home and yeah. your kids and your grandkids. But and I, what I've been so it? blessed through each one of those missions. And then I was able to work at the temple between each mission. Oh, yeah. So what were all of the different missions that you went to? Uh, Bristol, England was first, and I was the mission president secretary. And I got to work with the young missionaries and the senior missionaries, and it was a wonderful mission. Mm -hmm. And then the last four months, my companion was from oh, up northern Utah, and she had to come with a bad leg. And so the president said, would you mind going into Wales and cross-lining? I said, no, I thought that's what I was going to be doing, was cross-lining all the time I was on my mission. Uh -huh. But he said, no, I needed you for my secretary. But he said, if you go, I've got this one sister that's been with the young sisters. He said, oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, he said, Sister Darley has been out in the field, and so I hope you can get along with her. I said, that's okay. I tried it. What a challenge that was. Oh, really? <laughs> she thought she was the boss. And I had been used to being my own boss at BYU. Uh -huh. So a lot of it was my fault. But, oh, she'd scream at me if we decided to go someplace to work. And, she, and she'd get mad because I'd say one thing. Then, I didn't say anything to get mad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I had a hard time with her, but we still had success. We we had some good, uh, some people that we brought into the church, and we were sent to a town that had 25 families that had left the church, and oh. President Price sent us up there to see if they wanted their records taken off the church or what. And my gosh, we ran into families. It was wonderful. The families, they had been leaders in the, the race side president and the elders corn president. And it, it was amazing. Wow. And before we knew it, they, were, they had children that needed to be baptized, oh. blessed. And so we got in on quite a bit of work that way, oh, too. Wow. That's neat. Yeah. He had a companion that it was the same. He didn't get al they didn't get along at all, but they had tons of success. Yeah, it's so it funny. I wonder how the Holy Ghost could even work with this man. Oh, this one day I said to her, Sister Darley, I've got a sore throat. I'm going to go over 
across the street to that doctor's office. <laughs> and I went over there and sat down and read a magazine. <laughs> and when I came out to come back, she was standing across the street, this busy street with traffic. She was standing over there just yelling at me. Oh, no. I just... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, she said, you've been gone more than 20 minutes. <laughs> but and we ended up accomplishing our work. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you went to? To Bristol, England. Then I was Wales. home a year and went to Denver, Colorado. Okay. And that's where I learned the temple ordinances. Okay. And then I went to uh, New Zealand. Okay. And New Zealand. that was a wonderful mission. Mm -hmm. Each one was... And then I went to Washington, D.C. Temple, and okay. then Chicago. Okay. Wow. So that was my five missions. Wow. That's, that's a lot of work. <laughs> well, it was a lot of blessings. Yeah. I, I, I'm still getting blessings from those missions. Well, just to let you know, we are, at least I'm always bragging about you. <laughs> Well, I'm always like, my grandma is the coolest grandma. She's the perfect grandma. You better be careful. I might let you down. <laughs> no, but I, you know, and I, whenever I see you do something that's not perfect, it just makes me love you even more because I'm like, wow, she's human. <laughs> oh, I love it. That reminds me of this one lady that came to visit me one time and she said, I'm so glad to find out that you wear rollers in your hair sometimes. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> it was funny. <laughs> it's just, you know, I just, I've always thought you were the perfect grandma, and I always will, no matter what well, imperfections I see. I'm not perfect, I'll say. <laughs> yeah, I've made a lot of, lot of mistakes and had to pay for them, but Oh. Well, here's another question. I kind of got you off track. Oh. <laughs> no, that's, that's exactly what I wanted to happen, so it's perfect. <laughs> okay. So, how do you want to be remembered? Oh, gosh. I don't know. Just that I've loved my you know, family, and I've loved the get-togethers we've had, and... I've been so blessed to be with Christina and Sheila, and I had my, I had my state president, who had been a scout of my of Max's. <laughs> he was my state president, and I said, "Would you bless my home?" And he said, so, and he did, and he blessed it that it would be a gathering place for my family. And so I kind of stuck with that. I thought that's what I want. I want it to be a gathering place where the family likes to come. And yeah. I believe they have enjoyed yeah. coming here. And Definitely. That we could have peaceful get-togethers, you know, and mm -hmm. we've never had any bad ones. That's yeah, that's an amazing thing. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, because a lot of families really have trouble when they get together. Yeah, and oh. I've always... I was devastated the first year we didn't come here for Thanksgiving. <laughs> I <Yeah>. still am. <laughs> no, I'm not. But it's just, I always looked forward to that. Yeah. Always. Well, and it's it was always good memories. Yeah. get together more. Yeah. Now, it's so, everybody's so spread out. Yeah. Yeah, but it's still good. But I just Anytime. like the family to feel close to each other and to be kind to each other. Yeah. Um, ooh. Oh, don't touch it. No, go play with the Legos over there. Oh, look here. Oh, <laughs> no, no, That's don't touch. That's a little lamby. Lamby? Lamby, lamby. Let's see. What are the most important life lessons that you've learned throughout your life, do you think? I know it's very vague, and it could cover a lot. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, through well, I, I know and... that it's not good to take sides in a family. You, you can't solve all the problems, but you can be a good listener, and that's what I've wanted to be, is a good listener, and, and let my kids know that I love them, and 
Is that the question? <laughs> Let's see. I told you to come back when you're done. Okay. Life okay. lessons. But I do have to say, you've passed that down to my mom. Yeah. And I hope that my mom has succeeded in passing it down to me. Yeah. <laughs> because that was something that I didn't realize was such an amazing thing until I got married and moved, kind of grew up. Yeah. And yeah. then I was like, I, I've i always thought my mom was amazing, just the most amazing mom, and yeah. she must have gotten that from you. <laughs> she has been a wonderful mother, yeah. hasn't she? She has been. She amazes me every time I talk to her, I think. <laughs> what is that girl? Who else she does? <laughs> and I always think that about you. <laughs> and I'm sure my mom does, too. Yeah. And she always brags about you, too, by the way, just so you know. Yeah. <laughs> trying to build each other up. Yes. Yeah. Um, let's see. Okay, this one is one you don't have to answer if you don't want to. Um, what mistakes have you made in your life that you regret or feel that you have learned a lot from? Well, because I did have a problem when I had to get married to Gordon. Or, I mean, to Gordon's dad, I should say. And that was a big mistake. I've been, I thought, how stupid I could be. How naive I was. And so I, I felt terrible about that. But I went through the process of repenting with my, the longest walk I ever took was when I walked to my home in Emory. My aunt told me to do that. You just have to repent from those things. And I walked to my bishop, and oh my gosh, it was the longest walk I ever took. But I went through the repentance steps, and and the, the high council met at our home, and I had to apologize and everything. So I took care of all that. I've not told this to anybody much, so, but anyway, that was the one big mistake that I've made, but I believe that I have been forgiven, because look at the blessings I've had yeah. since then. Yeah. So I, I think we have a kind Heavenly Father. Yeah. yeah. Um, how did you meet and fall in love with Grandpa Max? Well, that's quite the story. <laughs> I was working at Eldred's Cafe in Emory, and his brother Harvey owned a transport, or he had trucks, and they would haul the Tribunes and Betsy Ross bread and come to Emory to go down from Salt Lake, clear to through Price and down to Emory, delivering that, and then they would bring coal back to Springville and sell it. But uh, Max, uh, uh, Harvey, Harvey was his brother, and Harvey would say, now I want you to go on a date with my, my brother. Well, he had two Maxes working for him, Max oh. Beardall and Max Robbins. And I thought, well, Max Beardall must, I, I didn't know his name, but I thought it must be him because he's dark like Harvey. And they both kid me. They come in and have coffee. And they're teasing me all the time. And Max Robbins would come in, never say much of anything, just hello and have a milkshake and be gone. <laughs> and so I thought, that can't be yeah. the brother. <clears throat> but then I found out it was. And Harvey, made he made a date for us. Oh. <laughs> and he said, we're coming down to go fishing out to south of him. I can't remember the place. Anyway, and so I, they set up a date, and they broke down, their truck broke down, and that fizzled out, and I was so glad, because I was dating some one or two guys that I really liked. But anyway, that was in the summer, so come Christmas time, there was a telephone call, and Eldred's Cafe was the only telephone in town. Oh. <laughs> so I answered it, and it was 
Harvey, and he said, I have somebody on the phone that wants to talk well, to you. Well, that's got to make you feel pretty special, the only phone in town, and you get a phone call. <laughs> anyway, uh, and it was Max. He had Max on the phone. I thought, he's probably got a gun in his back making him talk to me, because <laughs> Max was shy. But anyway, he asked me if I would go with him to Logan for Christmas, because that's where his folks were. I said, oh, no, I want to be in my, with my folks for Christmas. And he said, well, how about New Year's? And I said, oh, I, I don't think I can. I don't think my folks would allow that. And when I talked to my parents, they said, well, there wouldn't be too much wrong with that. You going? We know Harvey, and we know his wife. She's from Emory. <laughs> and... Uh, You'll be staying with his sisters, he said, up in Logan. So I remember the day that I was waiting for him to pick me up to go. And I was ironing for my mother, pillowcases and handkerchiefs. And I said, oh, Mom, I feel like I'm going to a funeral rather than a date. <laughs> but anyway, I went with him. And by the time we got to Farron, about... 20 miles, so I thought, why? He's kind of a nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> and we got to Salt Lake, and he was going to pick up his mother and Aunt Maggie, her sister, to go to Logan with us. And it was so funny. I just got such a kick out of those two women. <laughs> his mother was little and quaint, and <clears throat> she petite, you know, and she'd put a she could put a tin pan on her head and look cute. <laughs> but Aunt Maggie was a larger woman, and but she had to be just perfect. She'd stand before the mirror primping and fixing her everything. So I got, I got quite an impression of them. <laughs> but then we went to visit Grandma Robbins's brothers and, and sisters there in, in uh, Salt Lake first. And before we left for Logan, and my gosh, they had fun. They'd sit around in a big circle with a big pan of popcorn passing it around with their shoes kicked off, sit there and kid each other and tell jokes. And of course, I was from a family of two, my brother and me. And this was really a change, but oh my gosh, I had fun. And then we went on to Logan or, and met, I met another bunch of family members and we sang, went around visiting and sang Christmas songs. And even though it was New Year's, we were still singing them. <laughs> and then uh, Max's brother-in-law, Grant, I don't really know Grant and Bruce Skeen, uh -huh. their dad had an airplane. And he wanted to take Max, and you've probably heard this story a hundred so. times. <laughs> I think I might have heard it once, so, but, but anyway, I still like hearing it. <laughs> he wanted to take Max over the Great Salt Lake, because there was a railroad that ran over the Great Salt Lake. It was the Lucene Pass, and uh, they were going to remove it, and Grant, their dad Grant, wanted Max to see it before they removed it. And they were up in the air watching it, and Max got sick. And he couldn't find the burp cup in the plane, so he rolled the window down and leaned out, and his glasses just went sailing right down into the lake. So he said, well, we're going to have to stay another couple of days because I've got to have my glasses. So I called my boss, Eldred Mortensen, and I said, Eldred, I... I told him what happened, and he said, boy, that's a good story. <laughs> <laughs> but he said, oh, okay, I guess I can give you the time off. <laughs> so anyway, the, the thing that happened the first night I was there, that spot was embarrassing. I had a nightmare, because I, I was always having nightmares, but I had a nightmare, and I thought I was in bed with a gorilla. And I grabbed Grandma Robbins. I was sleeping with her, his mother. <laughs> and I grabbed her around the neck and screamed. And I, I woke up the whole house. <laughs> and I was so embarrassed. I thought, well, this is the end of this romance. I know. <laughs> but 
his sisters, they just took me under their wing and we went shopping. He turned his car over to me to drive and so I had a good time. <laughs> and then when he would come to Emory to dances and bring me lots of chocolates or flowers, I thought, wow, I've got it made. <laughs> Well, anyway, that's my romance. Oh, that's awesome. Well, what did he What did he think about um, you already having Gordon? Yeah. Well, he, he seemed to take to Gordon, and Gordon seemed to take to him. But I did worry a little after we got married, and we had been up here for uh, two weeks moving into the house. And... Uh, I left Gordon with my dad and mom, and I kind of thought, I wonder if they'll get along. But my gosh, they just hit it off, and they just got along. And Max was always so proud of Gordon. He, he just was interested in everything he did, and so it worked out just real good. And the, when we were uh, in the temple, we, we, we had Gordon sealed to both of us. Oh, so. Okay. So it worked out. Okay. So did you, um, how long did you date and then get engaged before you got married? Well, from that Christmas till July 11th. Okay. <laughs> yeah, July 11th, 1945, right. we were married. Okay. Well, and that was your first date, Christmas, around Christmas. Uh-huh, yeah. So that's around, that's what, seven months? I guess. That's the same as us. Really? <laughs> yeah. You went that long. Huh? <laughs> it was hard, though. It was hard to wait that long to get I married. Know. <laughs> oh, no. oh. All right, well, let's yeah. see. What are the very best memories you have of your childhood and then teenage years? Well, my childhood, my dad played the violin. And uh, we had family home evening almost every night. He'd play the violin, and my brother and I would dance around the table, and I just have so many good memories of that. We had the pot belly stove there, you know, and just a good home that was warm and clean. And, and uh, I remember my brother and I hauling. My dad was crippled with polio when he was three, so he had to have crutches to walk on. and But we would haul him down in our coaster wagon to the dances when he was going to play for a dance. And then we'd get to sit on the side and watch him dance. And mm -hmm. So we, I had a good, good childhood. And then when I got to where I was dancing, oh, I thought that was part of life. <laughs> dance, and I loved to dance. And but we had a lot of singing in our home. My dad's brothers would harmonize, and mm -hmm. they were good singers. And, uh, and my dad formed several orchestras, and we had the CC camps down in Emory. Oh. That was government, you know. And uh, my dad made friends with some of those guys because he found out they could play guitars and mandolins and and so they'd come to our house and practice and that made some good memories. Mm -hmm. In fact, I dated the one kid. <laughs> His name is Bethel Pulliam from Kentucky and uh, I really liked him. Uh -huh. Everybody said, you two look alike. Oh, really? But, oh, my Uncle Joe had, uh, he was from Midway, but he had been on a mission in that area of Kentucky and Tennessee. Mm -hmm. and, and he used to warn me, he said, don't you go with that guy. You never know. He's got n Negro blood. <laughs> so he was always after me not to go with him. But I did like that guy, but I'm glad it didn't develop into anything more. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. So you're getting the whole story. I hope so. <laughs> I'm just thinking, I don't have enough time to sit here up for days and have good conversation. <laughs> so I'll have to come back another time soon. Because <laughs>
Yeah, looks like babies aren't gonna last too much longer over there. Well, yeah, we probably I'm... had about 30 of these cookies each. <laughs> oh no! That's <laughs> the only thing I can do to keep them quiet. Can you come sit by Grandma and we'll get I'm a so picture? I'm glad you came to visit me. I've got a picture of all of you with Grandma. Okay. I'll take it for you guys. Yeah. Hi. Hi. <laughs>